Uh, this, is a, this is a real nice cutaway view of an Otis machine. Now, again, this is very common. There are many manufacturers that have this style as well. And again, we have a situation where we have a live shaft. If you notice, the shaft is the same, same sort of situation. It's pressed into the spider. Now, instead of babbitted bearings or marine bearings, we now have the luxury of using the roller bearings. If you notice, in both areas, they have a set of double row roller bearings. And in its time, it was the, the you know, something that was, that was new, something that was more efficient. Uh, Otis produced uh, many, many of these machines. Um, they also had a pr provision in this machine that as the uh, bearings started to wear or show signs of, of, um, of looseness, they had a provision where there is a cap on this side with a series of shims. And by taking off the cap and pulling a shim out would take up some of the, the wear of those bearings and not allow that lateral action to persist. Um, if you ever worked on machines like this and you go over to the gear side and if you notice there aren't any shims in that area, it means that throughout the years they have been pulling shims out because of wear. Uh, sooner or later those bearings would need to be replaced, but this is a cluster bearing. Now what might be good for one particular machine and its style with pulling gaskets out could, could possibly be uh, not the right thing to do with another style machine, okay? So bear in mind that you Again, it's, you have to make a, um, a decision based on your knowledge and based on what you know about the equipment. Uh, this also shows a, another area, again, and uh, the, uh, the views that we have here are beautiful. You can see again that this particular situation, it being a live shaft, that you could get a certain amount of lost motion with this machine as well and that is that the shaft could break away. You could get some slop inside those bearings. Uh, there could be a whole host of problems. This also shows some other areas that are very um, far-fetched, but it, 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 we have seen it happen. There are times when the fit between the gear and the spider, and this, this shows it very nicely, there is, a, there is a, a very, very close fit, an interference fit between gears and spiders. The gears are actually made smaller than the spider so that when you go and put them on, you actually physically have to heat them up in order to, to mount them up. When they cool down to, to the same temperature as the spider, it acts as one member. So it's what we call an interference fit. And then to secure it in place would be a series of bolts, body fitted bolts. Well, there are times when that gear should happen to get loose. It'll start fracturing the, the bolts. And there are times when, 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 when nuts and bolts start fracturing, start breaking, uh, backing out, whatever, that would indicate that there's something wrong with the fit of the gear. But that's another contributing factor in lost motion. And this particular diagram certainly helps it out, uh, showing it or illustrating it. And there's another area right here, very uncommon, but it does happen, and that's uh, the shiv bolts, the mounting bolts. The shiv is mounted the same way. The wheel of the shiv, the mountable shiv, is actually smaller in size than the area that it's being put onto. Um, and in order to either remove it or install it, it requires you to heat it up nice and carefully and very softly either knock it off or knock it on or put it on, whatever. But uh, the reason for the heat is to expand that material to allow you to remove it or, or, or to install it. We've seen situations where those bolts do break, they shear, very uncommon, but it's something to always look for. Another contributing factor, factor to lost motion. Sometimes they never break or anything, but they'll just rock. Just by tightening it back up again, you've certainly destroyed the fit between the sections, uh, between the, uh, the, um, the components, but uh, it is an area that you should look for, lost motion. Not common, but, and very hard to detect sometimes. If you're looking at the machine, you see a rock in there, and, and you don't know where it's coming from, but uh, you really have to have a keen eye for it. Okay. Let me show you another style one that we thought was a, uh, a real good one. Many, many manufacturers have used this style. Uh, this happens to be a cut off a, off a Westinghouse machine, but Westinghouse armor, Horton, um, I like to say Titan, um, Hollister, quite a, quite a few different manufacturers have used 
this type of arrangement. And it's again, it's our, it's our friend, the taper roller bearing, put right into this area right here. And, and this, by the way, shows a, now a dead shaft or a stationary shaft. The shaft is stationary and everything rotates on the bearings. Now, when we put these taper roller bearings together, or I'll put it in as a, as, a, uh, as a rotating member, the outside race, which is illustrated right here, this outside race and this outside race are pressed in position. They're actually fitted into that bore or into the hole of the spider. And it acts as one member. It now acts as if it was part of that spider. And the, the other section of the bearing, which is the, the other part of that, that taper roller bearing, is pressed onto the shaft. So it acts as one member. So all of the rotation is done between the rollers. And that's where we get our efficiency. That's where we're able to get our loading. And these are very high, very precise rollers, uh, one that lend a, a, a lot of uh, quietness and support and efficiency. So whenever we have a situation where those fits of those bearing races are disturbed for whatever reason, um, we're certainly going to get failure. We're going to, get, we're going to contribute to lost motion again. We're probably going to see problems with the gear, a whole host of things that can come up. You've heard of a situation called spun bearings. Well, bearings physically could spin on the shaft. Uh, maybe the, the, uh, the mounting of them weren't proper when, they, when it first started out. Maybe there was just too much loading on it or fatigue, who knows what. But uh, those surfaces and, and, and the success of these bearings, the taper roller bearing, is one that they have to be pressed in place. Okay. Um, let me talk to you a little bit more about this, uh, this particular spider. This spider is all one cast piece. And the way we get the preload on these bearings would be using covers. An actual, the actual bearing cover acts as the preloaded member. You might remember me before talking about a castellated nut uh, on the front spindle of your car. Instead of that nut action, we're using an actual bearing cover which pushes up against the outside race. The actual cover is pressed against the inside bearing race this way with a cover. And the inside of this section of the bearing is put up against the shoulder of the shaft. And by that support and by the pressure of the cover, we would then get our preload. Now, that preload could change as this bearing wears. And as the bearing wears, probably the best thing to do is to replace the bearings. However, people have removed shims between the, the, the cover and the housing in order to push it in a little bit more to maybe get a little bit more life out of it. It would also, in effect, change your gear setting too those few thousands that you're moving it back and forth. But certainly on a temporary basis, you probably could correct any play that's in that, in that machine. We have seen people successfully do it for years. OK. Um, next item here on, on this particular drawing is uh, we're going to get into shivs later on. But this also demonstrates a, a non-demountable shiv, if you look at it. This is a solid cast shiv, which, which, by the way, many manufacturers have made throughout the years. Some choose to make the mountable ones, and, and some have chosen to make solid shivs. OK. Let me show you a very unusual looking spider assembly, main bearing and main shaft assembly. This is a type of assembly that's known as a, uh, an Otis uh, CT line, uh, known as a 17, 22, 29 CT. They have a, a few different versions and sizes. If you notice, there is, no, there is no real shaft support on the end of the drive shiv. This represents the drive shiv right in here. The drive shiv is one that's, that's counter-hung off the machine, off the gearbox. Traditional machines have some sort of support on the end. But of course, you might have an application where this might be used for a basement machine. And you, won't allow, you, you, you uh, would have a conflict with the, with the uh, way the a traditional machine is made that the pedestal would be hitting a platform coming down in a basement, whatever. Uh, so they've designed a machine like this. Now, again, here, here are our friends, the taper roller bearings again, 
doing the same type of work, supporting the whole assembly. This main shaft, if you notice the arrangement of it, is using the taper roller bearing. It's a very modern machine, but we have a live shaft. This is not a dead shaft anymore. This is a live shaft, so the shaft rotates. The, uh, the gear is mounted onto a spider that is keyed onto this main shaft. And the, uh, the arrangement is one that the shift could be removed quite easily, facilitates uh, removal. It's a demountable type shiv. But there is a bit of a, of a problem with this particular design as the bearings wear. Should the bearings, especially in this area, which supports most of the suspended load of the machine, should it wear or show signs of wear or movement, it very, very dramatically will affect the gear and, and very dramatically affect the, uh, the bearings. Uh, the bearings will tend to wipe out very quickly, be only because of the fact that we're suspending a load. It's almost like hanging a load off, a, off an end. It's going to affect, destroy this bearing as well. So as soon as there is a little bit of movement this way, it will deteriorate very, very quickly. It's not as forgiving as some of the older type machines. So if you have a machine like this, certainly you want to put some attention on the fact that if you see any movement or any noise or any type of indication that there's uh, any slop in that machine, uh, I would recommend very, very quickly inspecting it and, and seeing what you can do to get some of that, that play out and maybe even replace those bearings if it's necessary.